Universal Governance and Management System 7 presents What is Law? Part 1 What the Best Jurists Say What is Law? It's a world of its own. Throughout the history of the Western world, countless legal minds have given their best to answer the question, what is law? Tons of books fill law school libraries in search of the answer. For too long, law has been isolated in a world of its own with its own specialized language that seems to be protected inside places that look like temples. The problem, we have a multivocal term. The problem starts because the same term is applied to many different things. The word law is multivocal. Let's take a look. Law is the name for a scientific discipline, a particular field of study, a science, usually considered a social science and therefore a soft science. This in comparison with the so-called hard or exact sciences such as mathematics or physics. The law is also the body of man-made rules that apply in a given place and time, such as American law, British law, or Roman law. Law also stands for different schools of law, housing different theories of the definition and origins of law, as in natural law, the positivist, the sociological school, and so on. Law is also the name for a legal profession. A lawyer practices law. In a general sense, an attorney is an officer of the court. Looking at the structure, you get the same thing. Laws are special types of rules aimed at controlling a certain type of human behaviors. Here the focus is on the grammatical structure of the legal norm. First, a hypothetical statement followed by a consequence. The sentence is of the type, if so and so happens, then so and so must also happen. In Anglo-Saxon countries, many scholars say that the law is whatever a judge says it is, as we shall see soon. This definition is influenced by the study method where the legal system is built from the bottom up, from individual cases to later identify conceptual structures. Now, other scholars take the formal approach. In Napoleonic legal systems, the law is what the legislator says it is. This definition obeys the idea that a legal system is designed first, and that during its application, the law will eventually fill in all the details. A more sarcastic approach says that the law is truly law only if it is effective in actual practice. Otherwise, it is gibberish or a useless waste of words and effort. Now let's take a look through some of the schools of thought. The natural school says, in the natural school of thought, a court of justice decides all the laws. 
there are two main parts of this definition. One, to actually understand a certain law, an individual must be aware of its purpose. Two, to comprehend the true nature of law, one must consult the courts and not the legislature. In a school called Positivistic, John Austin's law definition states that law is the aggregate set of rules set by a man as politically superior or sovereign to men as political subjects. Thus, this definition defines law as a set of rules to be followed by everyone regardless of their stature. A positivistic alternative is taken by Hans Kelsen, who says that law is a normative science. This is his pure theory of law. In Kelsen's law definition, the law does not seek to describe what must occur, but rather only defines certain rules to abide by. The historical perspective is best represented by Friedrich Karl von Savigny, who gave the historical law definition. It states the following theories, that law is a matter of unconscious and organic growth, that law is not universal, just like language it varies with people and age, and custom not only precedes legislation but is superior to it. Law should always conform to the popular consciousness because of customs. Law has its source in the common consciousness of the people. And finally, that the legislation is the last stage of lawmaking, and therefore the lawyer or the jurist is more important than the legislator. Representing the sociological stance, Leon Dugui states that law as essentially and exclusively a social fact. There is another sociological grounding of law, this one by Rudolf von Jering. His law definition, it's the form of the guarantee of conditions of life of society assured by the state's power of constraint. This definition has three important parts. One, the law is a mean of social control. Two, the law is to serve the purposes of society. And three, law, due to its nature, is coercive. Here is another sociological explanation. Roscoe Pound studied the term law and thus came up with his own law definition. He considered the law to be predominantly a tool of social engineering, where conflicting pools of political philosophy, economic interests, and ethical values constantly struggled for recognition. Against a background of history, tradition, and legal technique, social wants are satisfied by law, acting which is acting as a social institution. Here is a realist speaking. The realist law definition describes the law in terms of judicial processes. This position is represented by Oliver Wendell Holmes who stated, law is a statement of the circumstances in which public force will be brought to bear upon through the courts. Here is another realist, but this one arguing probabilities. According to Benjamin Nathan Cardozo, a principle or rule of conduct so established as to justify a prediction with reasonable certainty that it will be enforced by the courts 
if its authority is challenged is a principle or rule of law. As the above law definition states, human behavior in society is controlled by the help of the law. It aids in the cooperation between members of the society. Law also helps to avoid any potential conflict of interest and also helps to resolve them. A more recent idea about law and its nature comes from Paul W. Kahn, writing about the nature of the legal order. He says that there are two different concepts of order, project order and system order, and both shape the American legal imagination. Project order is the result of an intentional act constructed according to a plan or idea, as in, for instance, the Declaration of Independence of the United States. On the other hand, system order refers to when a system is identified and order seems imminent. It is discovered in the real world, such is the case with Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations, where he describes the economy as following an imminent order, the result of no one's intention. The American legal system has been in an evolution that represents both types of order. According to the Yale Law School publication, Professor Kahn says that American law was dominated by the revolutionary project all through the 19th century as an organizing idea for the emerging constitutionalism and the practice of judicial review. Khan also says that around the time of the Civil War, however, the concept of system becomes the organizing principle of the legal order. The written constitution, the product of a project, is displaced from attention by the unwritten constitution, which is the spontaneous order that develops as the law of a free people. This results in the fact that by the end of the century, we lose the idea that the revolutionary project represented a break with British law, as constitutionalism and common law converge as similar systems, says Kahn. I conclude saying that we have enough elements for part two. This presentation does not attempt to be complete. It does, however, give a good idea of how difficult it has been for legal scholars to define the law and to reach some sort of consensus. In part two, we shall bring the cybernetic perspective, a thoroughly systemic view. I hope you like it. Thank you.